Hello, and welcome to Beginning Your Android Development Journey in Unity. I'm John O'Neill, a senior software engineer and part of the Accelerate Solutions team at Unity. This presentation is going to consider Android development in the following areas. Best practices with regards to Unity development at various stages of your game, optimizations, and areas to focus on, and where to look for answers when you have questions or need examples and help guiding you through the process of implementing your game in Unity. When we talk about best practices, um, these really come from a wide range of experiences that I've had in developing multiple games and distributing on the Android platform. And these really start in planning your development, um, not just when you're finished with the game, but really as early as the initial concept and design. And so we'll, we'll look at various stages and some of the things you need to think about when you're preparing, you're developing, and then you're deploying your product. Uh, we'll also look at a number of tools and resources that helps make your life as a developer a little bit easier as you're getting your game ready. Talk about some optimizations and when to do optimizations and how to compare that information. And then finally, a brief introduction on performance and understanding what it is that we're looking at, evaluating performance and especially considering the, the mobile performance items that you really need to keep in mind. A little bit of planning at the beginning of your development will make your life so much easier when you're trying to deploy to a audience, potentially around the world. As fun as it is to jump right in and start implementing your code, you might find that you've set up a lot of bad habits if you don't think about the implications of how you're designing, implementing, and deploying various aspects from asset allocation to sound, compression, texture resolution, all of these things will grow and escalate if you don't have a plan in place at the design stage so that you can set your structure up properly. Unity does a fantastic job of giving you access to the project hierarchy. And if you organize your assets correctly at the design stage, your entire team will find it much easier when you're at the point of packaging, deploying, and launching your game. One example of a development timeline that you may experience, and this by no means is every case of game development, um, but you know, one of the examples that we can talk about is kind of four stages of development that you'll go through. Starting with pre-production and planning, uh, this is really at the beginning when you have the initial concept, team is coming together, you have an idea, you might start organizing uh, from a design standpoint and even technical prototype standpoint your game your assets your folder layout your structure how you're going to deploy you know what types of uh, issues that you might run into as you're going through and thinking about you know where's your target launch what's your audience you know when are you going to finish it is there a good time to launch to the market that you're targeting Getting into full-scale production and development, this is the you know the guts of building your game. This is you know you're implementing your product, you're going through and creating the art assets, the code, the resources associated with what makes the game your game. As you get close to preparing to finalize and deploy, this is typically where you're doing more internal and external focus testing. Um, you'll take advantage of things on the Google Play Console where you're able to distribute limited private or public betas. And then never forget that once a game is launched, the support and maintenance stage uh, really can be a very long tail engagement, especially now when it's no longer a fire and forget, you know, launching a product, maintaining it, getting user feedback, seeing how it's performing, reading results from Android Vitals, understanding what your users are having fun with through analytics or having problems with through crash reports. The faster that you're able to respond, patch, update, and maintain, 
the, the, the bigger the engagement that with your customers you'll have. So these are kind of the four large areas that have different thoughts and different implementation methodologies when you're in them. Um, but collectively, you know, you're building a game and ultimately you know, what you go through may flow between these cycles. Let's talk about a couple of the best practices when it comes to mobile platforms. Your screen size and orientation is immediately something you're going to have to deal with when it comes to not only your user interface layout, but also the 3D assets that potentially are going to be displayed. The size of the screen doesn't necessarily mean the resolution is going to be small. And so while you may have the pixel density on a screen, the size may dictate that you don't need as large a 3D asset as what you would potentially on a much larger monitor. The orientation change that occurs, you may be interested in supporting if a user changes from landscape to portrait. And these are things that you can respond to in events in the Unity uh, system when your user interface canvas has to either reorient, take advantage of the anchoring positions, or potentially change the active canvas so that you use a portrait layout as opposed to a landscape layout. Now, these are things that you should think about when your team is designing the interface initially as to whether or not it's going to be flexible and dynamic enough, or if you truly need to know which screen orientation is going to be present and create your assets appropriately. Performance requirements um, really come into play when you have to consider the battery and thermal elements of a mobile device. So normally running something at a full 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second would be fine when it comes to a PC platform, for example. But if you're running constantly at this high level on a mobile device, you're potentially going to drain the battery faster and create a negative user experience. So keep in mind that your target performance may actually be lower and it should be roughly 60 to 65% of maximum throughput. As of organization, texture formats and packaging, another area that will affect you all throughout the development lifecycle. If you, again, talk about and think about as an organization, when you start designing your game, you will save yourself a lot of hassle when you're having to reorganize assets right before launch. And this comes down to the way that you potentially are packaging textures. If it's something that has to be immediately available when the game launches, or if it's something that potentially could be packaged separately and downloaded uh, through Google Play Asset Delivery. Your texture format and compression uh, will vary based on the need of your assets, but in general, it's a good idea to take advantage of the hardware acceleration through formats such as ETC2. One of the biggest things in Unity is the number of draw calls that occur. And draw calls are basically a request to the graphics system to draw something. So minimizing and organizing draw calls is one of the biggest savings that you'll get when it comes to lowering that performance hit and increasing the potential frames per second. Now, I've talked about frames per second, but many times the frame rate is not as important as the frame time. Frame rate is just a rough indication of how fast the graphic system is presenting to the screen. But the frame time is actually the amount of time that the CPU and GPU are actively working on preparing the next scene to be displayed to the card. So you need to look at through the Unity profiler how much time you're actually spending processing and look at the frame times in millisecond of the various aspects of your game code and your draw calls and how you can optimize that through you know, proper planning. There's some excellent tools that help you in your development efforts. Uh, directly from the Unity editor, there are a number of embedded tools from the profiler, the frame debugger, and the memory profiler that allow you to get a good snapshot of the actual performance without guessing where your bottlenecks occur. There's also a tool called the Unity Device Simulator, which allows you to run in editor in place of play mode various device orientations and configurations to allow you to get 
know, a better sense of how your layout from a UI and camera perspective will appear before you actually build and deploy it to a target device. In Android Studio, there's wonderful profilers that allow you to view CPU activity and traces with the CPU profiler, Java heap and memory allocations with the memory profiler, network traffic with the network profiler, and energy usage with the energy profiler, keeping in mind that the, the thermal performance is extremely critical to keep an eye on. Touching in again on the concept of profiling using tools such as the Unity Profiler, the Unity Profile Analyzer, which allows you to compare snapshots that you've taken at various stages of development, and the Android GPU Inspector. One of the biggest things that can help you is to remember profiling is not something you do just at the end of your development. Profile early, profile often, and then compare your results. This will give you an idea of recent changes you may have introduced and allow you to identify more effectively where you're having the performance problems as opposed to guessing where you have performance problems. Don't wait until just before you're trying to ship your game to go in and analyze where issues may occur. The more often you do this and take advantage of the tools between what's available in Unity and in Android Studio, the easier it'll be for you to hone your experience to be very fluid and effective for your users. Items you need to remember with regards to optimizations in Unity when you're targeting Android, keep your frame times in check. Remember to optimize for about 60 to 65% of your budget time, and this will allow you to keep those thermal throttling and warnings at bay. Watch for frequent string usage and allocations. These can crop up and ultimately cause problems with regards to garbage collection. Watch your serialization and data management, especially if you're working with JSON and XML, text-based. Know when you're going to be doing this, when you need to read information, and consider going to alternative formats as opposed to very text-heavy processing. Your memory allocations and garbage collection can have an enormous impact on the performance and stuttering that may occur at random times. Consider things like cooling your game objects instead of instantiation on need, pool and instantiate on startup, and then reuse as opposed to doing the create destroy loop that occurs. Also take a deeper view into any third party plugins that you may have downloaded and used from the Unity Asset Store or other sites. These need to be carefully examined for any issues with performance, optimizations, and needs specific to your target platforms. There's nothing more incredible than when you see your game being played everywhere around the world. In order to do that, you really need to think about your target audience, your demographics, your genre, and the languages that you're ideally going to be supporting when you were initially designing your game. You need to think about localization and options that are available to you in Unity and in Google Play that help you to target and distribute assets that are specific to the region and locale that you're going to be distributing in. You can view information about how your application is performing in the Google Play console and also determine how to distribute and when to distribute your target application to various regions of the world. Planning always makes an enormous difference. So the sooner that you can determine what is your audience and prepare your assets appropriately, the easier it'll be when you reach that point of deployment and you distribute this game and ideally hit a worldwide market. During each stage of development, you'll probably be looking for information in, in a variety of places. Um, a lot of these will cross over, but your needs will be dependent upon the type of information that you're looking for. 
For example, during the design stage, when you're planning for your development and you don't have everything completely laid out, you'll be reviewing best practices, e-guides, learning materials, sessions such as this. Um, and these are really designed to help you prepare for the challenges that you might face and some of the design ideas around your larger systems in a game. A quick example would be if you were targeting the Android platform and you're going to have a very intensive user interface, you're going to want to look for best practices related to the optimization of draw calls and organization of your hierarchies of information for the UI, how you reference textures, how you store assets, how you're going to be loading it into your game. Um, and preparing that at the design stage will allow you to better implement the solution before you run down the road of going and, and doing something that you're going to regret uh, when you're close to uh, actually deploying your product. Once you get to the full scale development, you might run into smaller questions about features in the Unity engine as it relates to specific Android settings um, and deployment options. This is where you would look for places such as on the Android developer relations site, Unity forums, um, even Stack Overflow and sites such as answers.unity.com. This is often you know, a, a search and find, so going back to your old friend, if Googling it uh, will certainly get you in a better place with regards to finding answers from other experts, other developers um, who are running through the same things that you are right now. When you prepare for deployment, keep in mind that Having a live ops view, understanding the analytics of your game, um, reviewing the content on the Google Play console is going to be very important. And especially touching in on a fantastic feature with Android Vitals and getting a live pulse of how your application is performing with your users and responding to that. Um, the user engagement, as we talked about with a worldwide audience, makes an enormous difference when you're actually able to address issues that your players are actually facing, rather than simply guessing what might be going on with users in the wild. And finally, once your game is deployed, uh, you have a wealth of knowledge available that you should share and become active in your game development community, um, attend hackfests, do you know, game review postmortems, uh, go to conferences, find ways to network and share this information and you'll find you build a larger audience and a group of people that you can depend upon when it comes to upcoming games and new technology and sharing that learning experience. So you can pass on all the tips and tricks, kind of like this, uh, with others who are going through you know, their first journeys. Game development is such a fun, invigorating, and frustrating process at times. Hopefully the information presented to you in this overview has given you a little bit of an idea of where to look for help and information when it comes to your journey developing games on the Android platform using the Unity game engine.